Let's talk about your boys. LSU 49, Florida 42. This was shocking, I I guess you could say, but in a way, maybe it wasn't. I said on the BetUS show, everything points Florida. All the injuries, all the stats, all everything points Florida. There's only going to be 70,000 LSU fans in the stands at this one. It's not a raucous home field environment. It's all this different stuff, right? And yet... We had the same damn situation last year when they went to Gainesville, when everything was looking against them, and they went into Gainesville with 40-something scholarship players and won against a a top five, I think at the time, Florida football team that was headed to the SEC championship game. I I don't know what to make of this. Like I, I will tell you this. It is really, really nice to have a week where we are not talking about when Coach O is going to be fired. Yeah. And instead, we're talking about the other side where we got to figure out what Dan Mullen's doing. And it's Todd Grantham that maybe should have been fired if, at the end of last season. We're, we're back but, into the days of third and Grantham, aren't we? I, oh, very much so. This is so the numbers here uh, Tyrion Davis Price, by the way, LSU single game rushing record, uh, had 287 yards on 36 carries. That's eight yards a clip. Uh, but on top of that, like. Florida's defense had been pretty good against the run. And LSU had, what, 327 yards? I think I saw this. 327 yards in the in the previous four games. Yep. They had 321 in this game alone. That is damning. Just yep. damning. Like, there's there's nothing that you could tell me that, that would have made me believe before this game that LSU would be able to do this. And yet... Uh, yeah, good. Yeah, no, go ahead. I, I'm. I'm so just. There was, there was nothing from the LSU side. This was not. This was not coaching. This was not scheming. This was not any of that. This was men deciding. We are. We're resetting the season. We are tired of the way we have looked. We are tired of we, the embarrassment that we've been. It's. It's time to put all that behind us and just go outplay somebody. Just go be bigger, stronger, faster than somebody else. Go yeah. hit somebody that's in front of you, push them to the ground, and just impose your will on them. And that's exactly what they did. They did it the entire game. What? So I'm I'm really proud of of LSU and the performance that they had. Unbelievable. the The question that I've got to ask is is what in the hell is going on with Dan Mullins? And and it's simply this: Dan Mullins, the, the Florida football team leads the SEC going into that game and running for football, right? Yes. They, they they ran the ball on everybody, and they lead the SEC in rushing the ball. Well, led the why country. They, like it. Why, why, didn't they, why didn't they run the football against us? He comes out throwing the ball, and they turn the ball over four times, and I'm thinking, what are you doing? Just d- Kentucky ran it right down our throat last week. Everybody that's played us that's given us problems or that's beating us up ran the ball down our throat. Week in and week out. Why are you, the best rushing team in the country, not running the football on us? Why are you coming out trying to throw it on a team that everybody's running on? What What I, are you thinking there? What is I, your I don't have an process? answer. Like it, and they, I don't either. I'm, I'm damn glad he did it, but I don't understand it. They ran the ball 35 times for 138 yards, only 3.9 per clip. Uh, it is... I mean, it's mind-boggling. Emory Jones ran it 10 times for 16 yards. Anthony Richardson ran 7 times for 37 yards. Naquan Wright, uh, 8 for 34 yards. Damian Pierce, 5 for 24. Like, they never gave anybody an opportunity to really get going. And part of it was they they weren't stopping LSU, and they were giving easy points early, but, but they were throwing early. That's what got them in the hole to begin with was... They were they were giving the ball away. Emory Jones with three interceptions was, I mean, just damning. Like it just yeah. ridiculous. At this point, like you if, if, at Florida, you've got three losses. You absolutely have to stop the Emory Jones experiment because he's had three years. Like he's he's had three years to prep to be in this position, and he's not good. You have got to start. Anthony Richardson. You got to start AR fifteen going I, forward. I love and I love Anthony. I love Anthony Richardson yes. too. I think that kid is a star. 
I think he's really good, and I, I don't know why he's not getting more touches. I just – well, Did understand. you see his tweet after – or not his tweet, his uh, his post-game comments afterwards? And I, I'll have to say, it was – somebody – Somebody said, like, should you be starting or whatever the question was, somewhere around there. And he was like, you know, I don't know. We'll just have to see going forward. It was it was basically him saying, like, you better start me or I'm leaving. Yeah. Like, I, I deserve this role. And it's very similar to what is going on in Oklahoma, right? I think I, he, but hang on, I think he's right. He is right. Football is, football is supposed to be a meritocracy. It is supposed to be the one place where – Race, religion, economic status, political views, all of this stuff goes away. Seniority, everything goes out the window. And it is, we have 50-something, 60-something football teams, 80-something men in a locker room. And you owe it to all of them, the rest of them, to start the best players, okay? You owe it to everybody that's working really hard to, to do the job, to win football games and to compete every week. You owe it to all of them to put the best people out there, the most deserving people on the field. All right. That's, that's your, that's your number one responsibility as a coach is to make sure that no outside bias influences come in, in, into play here. And you just start the best players. I don't know why these coaches are getting too cute with this. If you've got somebody better than someone else, why is Lincoln Riley afraid of, of Spencer Rattler transferring out? Why is he scared of that? The guy can't play football and be really good at it. We've watched him. You have one of the most quarterback-friendly offenses in the world, and he's not very good. Emory Jones has had signs of being good. But Dan Mullen is one of the most quarterback-friendly coaches in the country. And the other guy's better. Why are you afraid of him leaving? Where can he go where you think he can snake bite you? You got me. You got me? I, I don't know. Hey, you by think the way, he's going to transfer to South Carolina and their offensive <laughs> coaching staff is better than you? You I, think I doubt they're going to get something out of him that you couldn't get? I will tell what you, are you scared of? I will tell you what some people are scared of, and it's what happened to James Franklin in Kinnick Stadium last week, and that is you've got two guys that are pretty good. You want to try and make both of them happy. When one of them leaves and you don't have the other guy that's behind him prepped and he's not ready to play, it can cost you a game, right? That's That's the issue. But it can cost you a game like this one if you're Dan Mullen if you don't start the right guy from the very beginning. So, yeah. You know, uh, what are you going to do? Hey, the Flying Hawaiian jumped in and said, like the video, guys. Yes, we've got uh, we've got more people watching than have liked the video. So go ahead and like the video for us. And make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We do this every Sunday. For those that are coming in from Chicago and whatnot that, that heard me on Friday morning with Jonathan Hood, we appreciate you being here. We talked a lot about our Sunday recap show on that. So, uh, yes, we we are glad that you guys are here. Uh, Josh jumped in and said, go Tigers. Ghost Dog jumped in and said, LSU in Florida showed me they got no defense. And Modest Cowboy said, Ed O knows how to get his team motivated. Really impressive. I I don't even know that it was necessarily coach. I think this was a team that was tired of being embarrassed. That's what uh, I think. Some, some of it is coach, and Coach O's got to get some credit here. The best thing, I'm going to tell you the best thing that came out of Tiger Stadium. Now, I don't know. This is the thing that makes me the happiest. I don't know if it's true either. It, it is absolutely a rumor. But the rumor is that after this game, him and Woodward sat down. And, and had a long talk, and they basically negotiated lesser buyout for him to, to leave at the end of the season, and he gets to finish the season no matter what else happens. And there's a trust factor of, I trust you with this program. I trust you to do the right thing. But also, we want to leave this thing in, in, a, in the right way because we want Coach to always be able to come back to Tiger Stadium and be heralded as a hero and not be remembered for this season or last season. We want, we want to be able to celebrate in 10 years the, the 2019 season and, and bring those players back and bring those coaches back and, and, and him and Joe Brady and Joe Burrow and, and Steve Emziger and all those guys and to celebrate and cheer them on again. And if they leave in you know tumultuous ways, you're just not going to get that. Yeah, it's, and it's I, very I tough think, to do that. I hope, I hope that that rumor is true because it, that's the that's how I want this relationship to end. I want it to to them to separate ways in in situations where we understand everybody's okay here. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at @garywce 
at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.